I invite you to take a seat and grab your Bibles or your Bible apps and turn to Proverbs chapter 29. Proverbs 29 is our text today. And uh, if you are in the room and you don't have a Bible with you, then we want you to grab one of the Bibles in the seats around you here at Sweetwater. Or if you're joining us at the Parker campus, we want you to get up and go to the table right back to the, the back of the room. Grab one of those Bibles. Turn to page 652. 652, you'll find our text. And as always, uh, feel free to take one of those Bibles with you if you need a Bible. If you want to read the Bible and you don't have one, then please take one. It is our gift to you. And, and of course, if you're joining us online, we're glad that you're here too. If you don't have a Bible and you want one, then please let us know. We would be glad to put one in your hands, either by delivering it to you or mailing it to you, because we want everyone to have a Bible. We want you to read the Bible because we know if you read and apply God's Word, God will change your life. Hey, uh, have you ever been a passenger in a vehicle where the driver had no idea how to get where they were going? Anyone, anyone ever been there? That, that is a, a, a life-changing prayer, in, you know, inciting, uh, faith-giving uh, kind of journey, isn't it? Because you're wondering if you're going to live or die. You're wondering, you know, if they're, they're, if they're going to pay attention. Uh, so I was in uh, on a mission to Jamaica, and I uh, was meeting up with some people there and got into the van with them. And I said, do you know where we're going? The guy says, yes. And he, you know, does Google. Now, you know, Google is somewhat reliable in the United States, but I'm not sure how it works in Jamaica. Because uh, all I know is uh, it was nighttime, and he was driving, and he was trying to follow Google. And we ended up at a dead end at a house in the middle of a mountain, it felt like, that was not the hotel we were supposed to be at. And at that point, I'm kind of like, this is a little bit, uh, are we going to get there? Do I, I don't, I've never been here before. I don't know where I'm going. Uh, you know, and so uh, we, it, you just want to know where we're going, right? Can we get there? Well, today we are discussing vision for Calvary and for you. Uh, we want to talk about where we are going as a church and where are you going as individuals. Proverbs chapter 29, verse 18 is the text that we're launching from for this discussion. Some of you know this text. Some of you have never heard it before. It says, where there is no prophetic vision, the people cast off restraint, but blessed is he who keeps the law. Now, if, like me, you grew up in church uh, listening to the King James Version, anybody besides me? King James Version, that's right. Uh, didn't understand a thing, but I learned some things. In the King James Version, Proverbs 29, 18 says, where there is no vision, the people perish. Anybody heard that one before? Yeah, where there is no vision, the people perish. I, I didn't learn the second half because it says, but he that keepeth the law, happy is he. I've, I, you know, I, I haven't never used the word keepeth in my life. But I really like this verse in the New Living Translation because it's really clear. When people do not accept divine guidance, they run wild. But whoever obeys the law is joyful. And that makes sense. Whoever does not, you know, listen or accept divine guidance, they run wild. But whoever obeys the law is joyful. I like that emphasis on running wild when you're not listening to God. Because either we listen to God or we run amok. All right, little confession time. How many of you have spent some time running amok? <laughs> might have been a season, might have been a decade, but you spent some time running amok. It's because you were not listening to divine Google, right? <laughs> you were not listening to God's Word and ending up joyful. See, as your pastors, we don't want you to run wild as followers of Jesus. We want you to live a joyful life. And by the way, as a church, we do not want to perish. Where there is no vision, the people perish. So today, we want to talk about vision. We want to talk about our vision, and we want to talk about your vision. And, and it all begins with this statement that uh, we, we started this whole series, This Is Us, with. And that is that mission matters. 
I would even suggest that you write one more word that fits with the alliteration of mission matters and that you would say mission matters most. Okay, mission matters most. I mean, you know our, our mission statement, right? It's on the wall. We talked about this. Calvary, we're all about leading people to a life-changing relationship with Jesus, right? That's why we exist. That's why we do what we do. That's what is most important to us, leading people to a life-changing relationship with Jesus. Uh, we shared that in the very first sermon, talked about why it's our priority and, why, and what we do. But we talked about our mission and mission matters. We talked about our values. We spent five weeks introducing our core values. And by the way, we gave you a little cheat sheet in your bulletin. If you picked one up, it looks like this. So you can just follow along. Our core values are relatable truth. See, I was going to test you and see if you, you knew, but I knew some of you already had this. You're like, go ahead, ask me. <laughs> I got it. But we start off with relatable truth. I, I think you guys have heard us say from time to time that if you read and apply God's word, God will change your life, right? And then we talked about transparent living, that God really desires us to be real, open and honest about who we are and allow other people to do the same. We talked about contagious celebration. Ah, oh, we like that one here at Calvary, don't we? Celebration. Following Jesus should result in a joy-filled life that draws other people to Jesus. That, that's kind of a, a given. That's why we want you to be a person who lives a joyful life instead of running amok. And we talked about uncomfortable grace for when you do run amok, right? That, that followers of Jesus give the same limitless grace they've received from God. It's what we do. It's who we are. And, and then... Radical service, we talked about that last week, that followers of Jesus best demonstrate love to others through acts of kindness and service. So the, the values are so important along with the mission because the mission is the priority and the core values tell us how we will live as we carry out the mission of Jesus. In other words, we're telling you what we're gonna do and we're telling you how we're gonna do it as followers of Christ, who we're gonna be. And, and the mission matters literally the most, because mission leads to life change. Mission leads to life change. That's why it's so important. If we exist to lead people to a life-changing relationship with Jesus, then the mission has to matter, but the mission leads to that thing that we're aiming at, which is life change. Uh, and we have seen over the past, all right, I've been here 29 and a half years as pastor, so I was gonna round up to 30, if that's okay with you guys. So we've seen over the past 30 years that when mission is a priority, life change happens. Okay, can I tell you a little bit about what God has done at Calvary in the last 29 and a half years? This is just, this is just a snapshot so you can look at it. Uh, in 1992, we averaged 125 in worship. And we baptized eight people in 1992, which I believe was a record for baptisms for Calvary at that point. Okay. First, I was only here part of the year. Uh, this year, we average over 2,500 participants in worship, and we baptized 237 people in the last 12 months. It's kind of cool, isn't it? To, to, to see what God has done. By the way, in the last 29 and a half years, we have baptized 2,188 people and two more scheduled for tomorrow. See, I think that is evidence that God's at work. But here's the thing, vision, I just want to give you that snapshot because you can see what God has done, but vision is, is great to remember what God has done, but vision is never about the past. By the way, vision is never about a person. It's not about me as a leader of Calvary because, you know, I've already told you, I, I set my retirement date for 2032. Freak some of you out when I announced that because you didn't listen. Uh, and, uh, and I'm going to step out of the role of lead pastor in about five and a half years, okay? So, so it's not, it's, this is way beyond, uh, it's not about me. That's what I'm trying to say. This is about what God is doing. See, vision is about where God is leading Calvary and how God wants to use us, not just how he's used us in the past, but how he wants to use us in the future going forward. Because why? Without a vision, people perish. They, they run wild. So what we're praying and planning for is seven years, seven campuses, and 7,000 people on a weekly basis. Seven years, seven campuses, 7,000 people uh, on a weekly basis. I just told you, you know, we have 2,500 people on a weekly basis. Now we're expecting that to expand, 
okay? Now, I'm telling you that because we're aiming for seven years. So 2028 is kind of a target goal, uh, and, and we're looking at this going, okay, this is where we believe God is going to lead us. So right now, we have four campuses. You may or may not be aware of that. We have the Sweetwater Campus. We have the Parker Campus, which is joining us uh, online. We have the uh, McCulloch Classic Campus, and then we have our online campus. By the way, do you know which campus is the largest campus? Online. Hey, they got it right online. I don't know if you said online or not, but they got it right. So, uh, so we, want, uh, we want to grow from 2,500 people weekly to 7,000 people weekly. That means 4,500 people coming into the, the, the sphere of Calvary's influence. That's our goal, seven years. Sounds kind of big. Sounds kind of crazy. We want to expand campuses, and we want to do that. But how that's going to happen, one of our goals is we want to train 2,100 servant leaders over the next seven years. 2,100 people. By the way, uh, you know, Pastor Sean mentioned our next steps classes on November 7th. That's what we're talking about, is encouraging people to take those next step classes so they can, you know, figure out who we are and what we're all about, and they can learn how to grow in Christ, they can learn about serving in Christ, and they can learn about leading others. And, and we're not going to achieve any of this unless the 2,100 servant leaders get trained and buy into this. And so uh, can I just encourage you to sign up for the Next Step classes? And, and, and here's what I'm uh, excited about with this, and it's another number I want you to write down, but it's not a seven, so we didn't put it in the notes. We set a goal uh, beginning 2020 of 4,000 baptisms by 2028. 4,000 baptisms. Yeah, write that one down because this is the one I'm most excited about. You know, the only way we're going to end up with 7,000 people, 4,500 new people is if we, if we reach them. If, if we lead them to that life-changing relationship with Jesus. That's why these goals are really important. This vision is important because we say, hey, we have something we're aiming at and something that we want you to be a part of because we want to see people come to faith in Jesus and declare that faith in baptism. And by the way, uh, we're over 10% toward that goal right now. So it, since the beginning of 2020, we have seen 418 people be baptized. And, and that's just in the last, you know, what, year and, and nine months. And, 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 and so we're, we're on our way, but we got a long ways to go. So seven years, seven campuses, 7,000 people. Now, this also involves our online campus. So let me just talk to our online campus for a little bit uh, right now. You guys are listening in. So you said, you guys guessed correctly, our online campus is our biggest campus, averaging about 1,300 participants a week. Okay, 1,300 different participants a week. And so we're glad you're joining us. We value you. And, and here's the thing. We want to uh, build out our digital connections. We want to build out our digital uh, community as part of Calvary because we know we're scattered all over the place. Some people are here in Lake Havasu, some in Parker, some up the river in Bullhead. We got people all over the United States watching. We even have people visiting from all over the world. So if you're joining us from another country, we're glad to have you as well. Uh, but we take this seriously. In fact, uh, this past year, we hired uh, a position that we created called our online campus director, and uh, his name's Christian Crow. And so uh, this is who Christian is. Hey, wait, you might have seen him. He's a drummer sometimes, like tonight. So, uh, and, and okay, and here's one more crazy idea, for, especially for our online people, or if you're a snowbird uh, and you're already back, I uh, guess you're back early if you're a snowbird, but we're glad to have you. So here's the thing. We thought it would be a cool idea if we came and visited you, the remote locations of Calvary. So uh, we feel like taking a road show, or, you know, doing a road trip and coming and hanging out with you and encourage you and worship with you and maybe even, you know, do a baptism. If somebody's ready to profess Christ, uh, and you, we, you know, we'd love for you to invite your friends, your family, your neighbors, and come over and gather with us. So if that interests you, because we think it's a crazy idea, but we kind of like it because we want to see the United States, right? But if you want to have a pastor come and hang out with you and your group and your remote location, let Christian know, let us know, and we'll start planning it for next summer. I won't promise you that you're your pastor of choice, but you'll get one of us, Okay. We're, we're already, uh, well, let's see. I've been here the longest. I get Hawaii, okay? <laughs> Just saying. Just saying. But they're actually, the staff in the summer is fighting over Alaska. So, uh, you know, uh, we just want to do whatever it takes to lead people to a life-changing relationship with Jesus. So uh, we're pouring into this. Seven years, 
seven campuses, 7,000 people on a weekly basis, 4,000 baptisms. And, and here's the thing, to accomplish this mission, it's gonna require investment. It, it's gonna require investment. Uh, so we've got, uh, we got a Parker campus and we were praying. We've been praying, hey, God, we need a, we need a location because we're meeting in the high school and that's great, but we can't do any weekday ministries. We can do some events, special events. So we were praying for, uh, you know, a Parker campus. And, and, uh, and so we got, opened the door. We got a building last summer. We bought it. We closed it on August. We gutted it. We're, we have plans in front of the, the architect to remodel that building. And, and then God surprised us. And last week, in both a moment of grief and, and joy, First Baptist Parker uh, voted to close their church and they also voted to give Calvary uh, Parker the campus. Isn't that amazing? So now we've got more space. I, you guys ought to be going crazy in Parker right now. That's all I gotta say. All right, so, but, so now we've got two campuses. We, we're gonna, you know, obviously have to figure out what to do, but, but here's the thing. Uh, the Parker campus, it's, it's beautiful and it's old, okay? It's a great location, it's a great plant, but it was built in the 50s and 60s. We're gonna need at least a half million dollars to, to bring that up to speed, up to code, up to everything that we want it to be for a long-term presence and, and see that Parker campus uh, just expand, which Parker's been averaging about 100 people in worship on a weekly basis meeting in a gym. So uh, God is good and he is raising up things in Parker. So uh, it's gonna require investment. And then we still have plans for North Havasu campus. I don't know if you guys are reading, but they're talking about developing up by Havasu Heights some more. We gotta put a campus up on the north end. And, and then uh, guys, we need to expand Sweetwater. I, I know, uh, look, there's room in here, but you guys are starting to fill the rooms up again. Uh, but we need space for our children on the weekends. We need space for our teenagers during the week. We need space for weekday ministries for adults during the week. We don't have that space and, and we're out of space. We're gonna have to expand here. Uh, and then there's other campuses that God's gonna open the door for and we need to be ready for that. So it's going to be, require uh, an investment on the part of God's people for us to be able to, uh, to do that. By the way, someone in Havasu, they were telling me just won the, the $100 million lottery. And if it's you, uh, the tithe is 20%. Uh, so. <laughs> Just, just, I believe, I'm, I'm, I'm asking God that it's a Calvary member that loves Jesus and loves missions. So, because uh, I'm greedy. But uh, anyway, hey, listen, that's our vision for Calvary. This is what we believe God is leading us to do and to become as we follow Jesus. Because you can't follow Jesus and stay where you are. You can't follow Jesus and stay the same. Mission matters most, and mission leads to life change. And then life change leads to life change. Life change leads to life change. It, it, look, if you're a follower of Jesus Christ, if you believe that Jesus is the one and only Son of God and Savior of the world, and you believe that Jesus died on the cross to pay for your sins and was raised from the dead, and you've made a commitment to follow Jesus with your life, then here's a question you ought to be asking yourself. Where is God leading me? What is my vision for my life before God. As, as a Christ follower, what does God have for me to do and to be? So uh, if you're part of Calvary, we believe, as your leaders, as your pastors, we believe that God wants to grow you in the image of Jesus. So we have seven questions, seven characteristics that, that we are hoping and praying and encouraging that will define your life. And none of these are gonna surprise you because we talk about them all the time, but this is the first time we define them as what it looks like to be a follower of Jesus at Calvary. And uh, we gave you a cheat sheet again, okay? Look at that sheet, uh, flip it over uh, and see where it says measures. These are the, the seven characteristics, these are the seven questions, and we literally want you to be able to use this on a regular basis, if it will, on a daily basis about your life, to say, hey, am I following where God is leading me? Am I becoming who God wants me to become? So here they are. Loving. How am I treating others with kindness and respect? Look, Jesus said the great commandment is to love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength, and to love your neighbor as yourself. We can't really follow Jesus unless we're loving. So how am I treating others 
with kindness and respect. Here, let me help you apply that. Because it's really easy to sit here and go, yeah, I'm doing a good job with that. So let me help reframe this. How am I treating others with kindness and respect while driving my car? How am I treating others with kindness and respect in restaurants or in doctor's offices or in line at the grocery store? How am I treating others with kindness and respect at work or in my business or at school? How am I treating others with kindness and respect at home with my family? You see, if we're not loving, we're not actively following Jesus. And then secondly, growing. How am I pursuing a deeper relationship with God? Look, look, I already said, you can't follow Jesus and stay where you are, so you ought to be growing in your faith. And, and so are you pursuing that relationship with Jesus? Hey, guys, there's a reason we give away Bibles. You know why we give away Bibles? Because we want you to read Bible. We know that you're not going to really grow as a follower of Jesus unless you put God's Word into your life, into your mind so that you're not conformed to the image of this world, into your heart so you don't sin against God. That's it. And, and, and you know, so we want you to read the Bible. We want you to, to join a life group. We want you to pursue that, that relationship with Jesus. We want you to worship regularly. And, and by the way, we've given you resources to help you do that. Not only do we give away Bibles, but we gave you a prescription to Right Now Media. You can sign up for it or use it on your bulletin because it's got that information on it. it. It is a treasure trove of resources from Bible studies to uh, marriage videos to parenting videos and, and entertainment for families and for kids. Look, look, it's there for the taking if we will use it. But how are you pursuing a deeper relationship with God? Number three, connecting. Who am I getting real with? Uh, you know, we talked about how easy it is to hide in church and to pretend and to play and, and everything. And, and, but really, honestly, who are you getting real with? Who is in your life that loves Jesus like you love Jesus that you are sharing your life with? By the way, that's why we push life groups all the time. Because we want you to be in a life group small groups so that you can know people and people can know you and you can share your life and they can share life with you and, and you can't hide in a life group, which is why some of you don't join life groups, I know. But see, who can you call at two in the morning when your life falls apart and ask them for help and you know that they'll be there? It's tragic if we don't have anyone that knows us. Fourth, forgiving. To whom am I extending grace? To whom am I extending grace? Look, we talked about uncomfortable grace, uh, and, the, and the truth is, the Apostle Paul said, be kind and compassionate to one another, forgiving each other, just as in Christ God forgave you. Forgiving as you've been forgiven. So who are you extending grace to? And the best answer to that is who needs grace in your life? You know who, you know who needs grace in your life? Everybody. Everybody you come in contact with, that's who needs grace in your life because they're gonna hurt you. They're gonna disappoint you. They're gonna frustrate you. They need grace. Some people you're holding a grudge against and they really, really, really need grace and you really, really, really need to give it to them because while you're holding on to that, those, that anger and that bitterness and that rage and that unforgiveness, you are destroying your own life. And Jesus' prescription is forgiving. So to whom are you extending grace? Uh, by the way, let's not talk about grace. Let's live it. Don't just talk about it, sing about it. Let's live it. Number five, serving. How am I meeting the needs of others? How are you meeting the needs of others? We talked last week about the fact that we're not supposed to think about our own interests, but also the interests of others. It, you see, it's not about you. It's not about me. A in fact, you can't, you can't follow Jesus and be selfish. It just isn't possible. And, and, and followers of Jesus serve other people. They, they don't just think of themselves. Number six, inviting. Who am I encouraging to follow Jesus? I, I shared last week about how our strategy really is just, we're gonna serve the community and then trust you guys to invite. Invite your friends, your family, your, your coworkers, your neighbors to come to church with you to join you in worshiping with you. That, that's what's gonna 
look, if we're going to reach 4,000 people over the next seven years, it's going to happen because you guys decide you're not going to let your family, your friends, your neighbors go to hell. Okay, now you can't make them trust Jesus, even though you want to, right? There's some of you, you're like, you're looking at your kids and you're like, I want them, I want to make them trust Jesus. You couldn't make them when they were five and you can't make them now. Uh, but here's what you can do. You can live it out and you can invite. You can invite. Doesn't mean people will say yes, but can I just tell you this? God honors our efforts. God honors our faithfulness. And if we will be faithful to invite, if we'll be faithful to encourage, if we'll be faithful to love those people and just keep doing it over and over and over again, we will see a flood of people who make decisions for Jesus that will make the past look like nothing. But it comes down to us. It comes down to you and me caring enough to say, hey, I'm going to, you know, Invite. And by the way, can I just tell you this? There are people who are moving to town who are looking for a church. And, and a lot of them are gonna find us. Praise God. If you're new to Calvary, I love it. I love new people. I love old people. And like people have been here a while. And I love old people. <laughs> and young people. Which people am I leaving out now? Uh, so, look, I just love people. But if you found us, praise God. We're excited to have you. But <laughs> we are way more excited about reaching lost people than about collecting Christians. So if you found us and you like us, and you wanna join us, get on mission with us. And, and, and here's the thing, people who are far from God, people who are unchurched are not looking for a church. They do not wake up on Sunday morning and go, hey, where should we go to church today? They'll drive by us and never even pay attention to us. Just like you drive by golf course and unless you're a golfer, you don't care. Right? It just reality, you don't. And, and they're not, go, it's not gonna be on their radar. God's not gonna be on their radar. Jesus is not gonna be on their radar. Church is not gonna be on their radar unless you bring it up. But if you bring it up and you're living out with integrity this life of Jesus and you invite them, a lot of them are gonna come. And, li and God is gonna change their lives. Number seven is giving. How am I trusting God financially? How am I trusting God financially? Generosity and faithful giving is part of our DNA as a church. And as I mentioned before, it's impossible to follow Jesus and be selfish. You, you just can't do it. So seven questions, seven characteristics that we believe Followers of Jesus will live out in their lives. And here at Calvary, we, these are the things we value, we're looking for in somebody who is growing in their faith in Jesus Christ. Okay, those are the measures. You wanna know what we value? You know, there's some things you might've noticed that are missing. Like you can win at Bible trivia. Don't care. Don't care. You know how many poles were used to set up the temple or the tabernacle in the desert? Oh, I don't care. Doesn't impress me a bit, doesn't matter a bit. Are you loving people? Are you serving, are you generous? Are you inviting? Those are the things that matter. So I just want you to know, this is what we are praying for as, as your pastors. This is what we are teaching for. This is what we are counseling for. This is what we are preaching for in your life. This is our goal for you. This is our vision for what you are becoming because, well, we read it already. We talked about it already. When people do not accept divine guidance, they run wild. But whoever obeys the law is joyful. We already told you, we want you to be joyful. We want to be that church of contagious celebration, not just when we gather, but when we scatter and we're living in our community. And the only way that's going to happen is if all of us invite Jesus to change us, all of us surrender to him and then submit to the spirit of God and say, lead us. We want to be the people of God like never before. So this is us. Is this you? This is who Calvary is. Is, is this what's reflected in your life of faith, of following? Does this describe you at all? Do you want it to describe you? 
Now, I just want to encourage you to have this conversation with God this week that, that maybe is uncomfortable. I dare you to read back through those seven questions, those seven characteristics, and ask the Holy Spirit to point out where you're not living up to that. What does he want to teach you? Because he will show you, he will teach you, he will explain to you. Because God is at work in us to make us more like Jesus. But see, you're the one who decides. You're the one who decides how you're going to live, what you're going to do, what you're going to be like. We exist to lead people to a life-changing relationship with Jesus. In other words, we exist to lead you to a life-changing relationship with Jesus. So what is your next step? What is your next step? Okay, we have literal next step classes in two weeks. Okay? You can sign up for them online. And I I know for a fact that the majority of the people in this room and joining us online have not completed all four of those classes. Which which one haven't you done? Have you done any of them? If If not, can I invite you to sign up? It's Sunday afternoon, Sunday evening, six, I think six o'clock is when we start. If you want to take the lead class, that starts earlier. And I'm teaching the lead class. I would love to teach you, uh, but it's four hours. So we start like at three o'clock. Okay, so th- that, that's what's going on. Are, are you willing to take that next step literally? Or maybe you need to get involved serving. Maybe God is saying, hey, I want you to serve people. I've got a task for you. Maybe you're a follower of Jesus and you've never been baptized. And we're talking about baptisms and you're sitting there going, yeah, uh, I should do that. That's the Holy Spirit, by the way, telling you, yeah, you should do that. And, and look, we can help you do that. We'd be glad to. All you have to tell us is when and where, and if there's water, we'll make it happen. And we'll bring the crowd if you don't have one. Okay, because we want to help you be obedient to Jesus. If you're stuck following Jesus because you won't follow him in obedience to baptism, let us help you. Some of you just need to show up Monday night at 630 in this room for Celebrate Recovery. That is your next step because you know that you've got these hurts, habits, and hangups that are plaguing your life and keeping you from being the person that God created you to be. Or maybe your next step is your first step. Maybe you're sitting here, maybe you're joining us online and you have never surrendered to Jesus as Savior and Lord. You have never said, I'm a sinner, God, I need you to save me. I believe Jesus died on the cross and was raised from the death and I give you my life. And if you've never done that, can I invite you to do it right now? Just right now, where you're at, watching, sitting in the room, doesn't matter. Just pray something like this, Jesus, I need you. I know I'm a sinner. I I want you to forgive me and I give my life to you. Okay, look, scripture says, if you confess with your mouth, Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. We'd love to talk to you about that. Our prayer team is gonna be here at the front after the service. They would love to pray with you, pray for you and rejoice with you. In fact, if you prayed that and you're in the room, would you tell a pastor? Find one of the pastors and just say, hey, today I made that decision to follow Jesus. If you're chicken to talk to anybody, would you grab one of the connect cards and fill it out and and drop it in the offering box on your way out? Let us chase you down. I mean, follow up with you. (laughs) Look, we take this whole life change thing seriously because that's the only way we're gonna be the people that God wants us to be. And by the way, all this vision stuff is really just about people. We want to lead people to a life-changing relationship with Jesus. We want to lead you to a life-changing relationship with Jesus. Because when you don't listen to divine guidance, you just run wild, run amok. But whoever obeys the law, they're going to live in joy. I know you want to live in joy. Let's pray. Father, thank you that you actually desire us to have a purpose. You desire us to take us to a place of joy, of life, of hope, of peace, uh, just of satisfaction and contentment. And, And God, you know how resistant we are to listen to your way. So right now, meet us in a powerful way. May your spirit move in this room. May we, uh, yield to you 
because you're the only one who's going to lead us to life. You're the only one who wants to bless us, not just in this world, but beyond this world. So God, let us hear your voice and let us stop running, stop resisting, stop rebelling, and let us say yes to Jesus so that we really can be the people of God that you created us to be. This is our prayer. We ask it in the name of our one and only Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen.